Hello friends, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So yesterday the video could not come out because I was not well. So I took a sick leave. Therefore, the video was, was not there yesterday. So in today's video, I'm going to compensate for the yesterday's video as well. So I have very important questions for you all. So let's begin with this video. But before that, the important information for you all is that you can download the PDF of this session as well as all the sessions that we conduct on our channel via the Telegram channel of ours. And the link of that Telegram channel is in description below. So on that note, let's begin with the first question. So where is the headquarters of a web international organization of election management organizations located South Korea, Philippines, Japan, Singapore, Fiji. These are the options out of which South Korea is the right answer. Now guys, why are we discussing about this organization in the first place? And above that, what is the full form of this AWEB? Obviously, we haven't heard of any organization which itself is known as only AWEB. So there could be, uh, there would be a full form of this organization as well. Yes, of course there is. But before that, you need to know why are we discussing about this organization only? So reason behind this is that recently Election Commission of India has hosted an international webinar on the theme of enhancing electoral participation of women, of people with disabilities and senior citizens, sharing best practices and new initiatives. And this seminar was, this webinar was organized in New Delhi. The webinar was organized on the occasion of the completion of two years of chairmanship of this organization. So India ha has held the chairmanship of AWEB for a period of two years till this period of time. And the chief election commissioner of India, that is Sushil Chandra, was the chairperson. So do remember this thing. Okay, now this is a very important breakthrough. So the chief election commissioner has announced that the women voters have surpassed the men voters. So this is again a breakthrough achievement. We can say that women participation in the voting process has increased and even surpassed men. Also, we need to look at why the men participation is low and what can be done in order to in cover this, uh, in order to enhance this participation more and more, okay? Next point is that 24 countries participated in this webinar. Now, this point is not very important from exam point of view, but it was for your information that this webinar that was hosted by India was for the purpose of sharing the best practices. And these 24 countries also included the countries from our immediate neighborhood like Bangladesh. Okay, So that was the uh, purpose for putting this point here. Now let's discuss about this organization. Association of World Election Bodies. So first of all, this is the world's first organization of the election management bodies, the regulators of elections in different countries. For example, India's regulator of election is Election Commission of India. So this, this organization is a part of AWEB. Now this AWEB organization was launched in 2013 in South Korea and presently the headquarters is in South Korea only. The purpose, why was this association created? So the basic purpose was to promote fair and free elections in the member countries. Right now, this organization has 118 election management bodies from 108 countries. So basically this organization strives to achieve good, uh, good, fair and free elections in its member countries by training the election officials of these organizations, which are already a member of this um, association. Okay, I hope that you are understanding. Basically, what does this organization do? This organization imparts knowledge, imparts training. It does the capacity building programs for its member institutions, which in turn results out or translates into, uh, into free and fair elections, into more democratic elections. So that is the purpose of this organization. And the function is that it conducts capacity building program for its member organizations, okay? So that was all about this organization.
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज विच इंस्टीट्यूट इज द होस्ट ऑफ आयुर्वेदा पर 2021 so from the options here the right answer is option e shri dhanvantri ayurvedic college and hospital in chandigarh is the host of this festival which is a three days festival and it is already over now so it is nothing uh, nothing is there to be memorized but also but remember that all india ayurvedic congress and ministry of ayush both of them collaborated to uh, have this Uh, uh this festival to organize this festival okay so this is a very interesting question guys what is the level of stunting in india as per the global nutrition report 2021 okay so uh, prime of ac let me give you the answer of this question 34% but i know majority of you would not understand this because this report is a bit complex so first of all i'm going to tell you about the background or the structure of this report then i will tell you about the base of this report or basically the details that are mentioned in this report so first of all this gnr it assesses a total number of 194 countries which in which automatically means that it has covered almost the entire world okay next this gnr is prepared by a stakeholder group that means it is an intergovernmental initiative it is a initiative it is an initiative of many countries many organizations contributing towards creating this global nutrition report this report assesses the level basically the progress made towards eliminating malnutrition in countries which are assessed that means 194 countries it also assesses whether these countries are on track towards achieving the global targets okay so we will be talking about the global targets but first understand the purpose of this report okay so measures the progress as well as it also assesses whether the countries are on line towards achieving those targets which have already been laid out by who in relation to the malnutrition okay so that is the basic premise on which this global nutrition report is drawn now for the purpose of understanding i have divided this report into two parts okay one part is about the global scenario other part other part tells about india's case okay what has india achieved in different parameters of nutrition for example wasting stunting over nutrition oh, sorry overweight oh, and we have anemia as well so these are different parameters which have been discussed in this report so we will be looking at the progress made by the countries at the global level as well as india individually okay so as per this report the entire globe has not made significant achievements or significant progress towards achieving the uh, levels of stunting wasting anemia and overweight okay so particularly the situation is one worse in case of anemia okay let me write it down again in case of stunting in case of wasting in case of anemia so all of these three parameters or in all of these cases the world the countries are lagging behind and majority of the countries are not on course towards achieving the, these targets okay the targets which have been laid by who similar is the case with india okay so india is also doing is not doing very good in terms of achieving the nutrition targets the worst case scenario is in the case of anemia okay so uh, approximately 160 countries have shown no progress altogether or there are some countries which are showing worsening trends when it comes to anemia so in case of india 50% of women population which are in the reproductive age that is 15 to 49 years are anemic so this is a very huge number now i hope that you have understood the basic premise of this report now let's move into the details
this is guys i have already told you now let's look at this picture i know it's a bit blur therefore i'm going to read out each and every point to you so that it becomes clear to you first point here is child stunting so childhood stunting in children which are under the age of 5 what is the global target which has to be achieved by 2025 the global target says that there should be a reduction in stunting by 40 percent okay 40 percent reduction in the number of children under 5 who are stunted now at present as per this global nutrition report of 2021 53 countries are known to be on course towards achieving this target okay now how many countries are assessed 194 out of 194 countries only 53 countries are on track towards achieving the uh, the goal of stunting okay so this is 27 percent of the 194 countries okay so only 27 percent of the totally assessed countries are on track towards achieving the stunting target next comes okay so next comes childhood overweight the global target says that there should be no increase in the number of children who are overweight by 2025. Right now, 105 countries, the maximum number of countries is in this block only. So 105 countries are known to be on course towards achieving this target by 2025, which is 54% of the totally assessed countries again. Then comes anemia. So 50% reduction of anemia in women of reproductive age. This is, guys, the global target that has to be achieved by the countries by 2025. I'm again and again repeating the year 2025 because this is important. You need to know that these are the targets. They have to be achieved by 2025. Do not forget to memorize this image because global targets and the present case, both of them are important. They can be asked. Only one country is on course to achieve this target. So this translates into a percentage of 0.5%. So the lowest in terms of the other parameters. Next is breastfeeding. So what is the global target? The global target is to increase the rate of breastfeeding in the first six months to up to at least 50%. 35 countries are known to be on track to achieve this target okay so this accounts for 18 percent of the totally assessed countries 18 percent of the uh, total countries which have been assessed in this report are on track towards achieving the target of breastfeeding this includes india as well okay this also includes india so india is also striving towards achieving this target of childhood overweight no children which would which would suffer the childhood over obesity by 2025 okay again india is also a part of this india is also on track basically india is also driving striving to achieve this childhood stunting target by 2025 next comes low birth weight so what is the global target 30 percent reduction in the low birth weight, uh, weight, 15 countries are on course and this translates into 8%. Now guys, here India is not a part of this block. Why? Because there is no data in India in relation to low birth weight. Therefore, we could not count on India. We could not assess basically the stakeholders who have prepared this report that did not get any substantial data on the birth weight from India. Therefore, India cannot be assessed in this block. Therefore, India is out of it. Next is childhood wasting. Now, I hope that you know the difference between wasting, stunting and all of these terms which are mentioned here. Stunting refers to the height okay so lower height in comparison to your age and weight wasting is low weight in comparison to the height okay so reduce and maintain childhood wasting to less than five percent and 57 countries are on uh, track to achieve this target and these uh, 57 countries include india as well 
now 57 countries account for 29 percent of the total countries okay so this is the chart these are the global targets and the progress made by the countries i hope that you have understood this this image well now let's move on to the numbers so i have already told you this these are the numbers of children who are stunted who are wasted who are uh, overweight and these are the numbers basically over 40 percent of all men and women are now overweight and obese overweight or obese okay so this is also a very huge huge number 2.2 billion people in the world are obese so this is again a very huge number and do you know why does this happen because of the diet okay so this report is going also going to talk about that we will be discussing that as well but diet plays a very very important role in our lives and we need to improve our diets okay next point is this which we have already discussed in the picture also 105 countries are on track to tackle the childhood overweight one fourth countries are track are on track to achieve stunting and wasting targets we have already seen that anemia levels have have gone nowhere because they have received no progress uh, or and they have uh, basically there are worsening trends in some countries also no country is on track to achieve the target on reducing salt intake or to stop the rise in adult obesity okay so this is also a point of importance deaths related to poor diets now poor diet lead us to non-communicable diseases okay and non-communicable diseases are a very huge cause of death okay for example diabetes diabetes is diabetes happens due to high intake of sugar and also stress but stress nowadays is basically stress is also a very major uh, issue many people have diabetes because of stress but here we are not talking about stress we are talking about the diet which we can definitely control okay so diet related deaths are responsible for more than 12 million ncd deaths ncd stands for non communicable diseases and this number my friends is equivalent to a quarter of all adults deaths every year so this is how diet is playing its role now the number of people dying due to the poor diet has increased by 15 percent since 2010 and this number has grown more rapidly has grown uh, basically rampantly than the population growth so this is again a very huge and stalking fact next in investment in nutrition so this report has also shown us the way forward that this much investment is required in the field of nutrition so that the people would shift so the food habits would shift from, from uh, the poor habits to good habits basically okay so investment required in nutrition by 2030 us dollar 5.7 trillion per year it would reach us dollar 10.5 trillion a year by 2050 so these are basically the numbers the investments that are required by 2030 we have many numbers now uh, in terms of investments that are required in different different fields for us to stay sustainable so this is just another number that you need to cram okay now comes india's scenario so first we will talk about positives then we will move on to the negatives so in terms of positives india is on track to meet the target for stunting stunting of under 5 children in india is 34% which is which is higher than the average of entire asian region the entire asian regions stunting level is approximately 22 percent okay so it is somewhere around 21.9 percent approximately 22 percent and india's stunting level is 34 percent so alone india is the mammoth it is taking the gigantic share 34 percent is the stunting level next positive point obviously this is not the positive point but still we have talked about stunting therefore we need to know the data about stunting as well however we are on course towards achieving the level of stunting the target of reduction in stunting next point is that india is on course to meet 
childhood overweight and exclusive breastfeeding targets 58% of infants in the age group of 0 to 5 months uh, are exclusively breastfed in india now let's look at the negatives okay so as far as at till this present moment there is no significant uh, progress made in anemia and childhood wasting india is among the 161 countries which made no progress or said to be worsening with regard to reducing anemia over half of the women in the age group of 15 to 49 years are anemic this we have already covered there has been a rise in anemic indian women in since 2016 in 2016 52.6% women were anemic and in 2020 this number increased to 53% okay india is also among 23 countries which are striving towards achieving the targets of childhood wasting now india is of course that is india would not be able to meet seven of the 13 global nutrition targets so there are 13 global nutrition targets but i taught you only six because those were the very very important targets and the entire report focused on that on on those targets only okay these include sodium intake raised blood pressure both men and women uh, obesity and diabetes okay so india is of course basically india would not be able to achieve the targets of reducing sodium intake among its population uh, india would not be able to tackle the problem of blood pressure diabetes and obesity among adults so that is the that is something the point is saying 62 point adults aged 18 years or above uh women and 3.5% of adult men are living with obesity in india so again this is an important data on obesity so do remember this as well so that was the global nutrition report now the next question is which of the following states is not a partner state in the second edition of the summit on global chemicals and petrochemicals manufacturing hub here the right answer is punjab now guys this summit was organized by ministry of chemicals and fertilizers in partnership with fiki and some states so the states are andhra pradesh gujarat odisha rajasthan and tamil nadu the basic purpose of this summit was to attract investment in chemical and petrochemical fields because india aims to become a hub in these fields so that is the basic idea behind this summit next question is what is india's gdp growth rate for fy23 as per moody's here the right answer is 7.9% for the current financial year it is 9.3% for next it is 7.9% and india is expected to grow it is expected to recover from the covid uh, pandemic okay from the economic impacts of the covid pandemic so here guys this video ends i hope that you have liked the video and if you have liked the content provided by us then do not forget to like this video and subscribe our channel thank you so much